It is critical to understand the anatomy of the anal canal for the management of benign and malignant anal pathology. Let's take a closer look with a walk through the anal canal. The anal canal is about two to four centimeters in length and begins proximally at the level of the levator muscles and opens distally at the anal verge. The canal is surrounded by the internal anal sphincter, a continuation of the circular smooth muscle of the rectum under autonomic control, and the external anal sphincter, a continuation of the puborectalis skeletal muscle under voluntary control. Histologically, the anal canal has a variable lining. The proximal two-thirds of the anal canal is columnar epithelium, with a transition distally to stratified squamous epithelium, or anoderm. The dentate or pectinate line marks this transitional segment known as the anal transition zone or cloacogenic zone where mucosa is composed of columnar, transitional, or stratified squamous epithelium. The anal margin consists of the perianal skin over a 5 cm radius from the anal verge. This consists of keratinizing and hair-bearing squamous epithelium. Anal intraepithelial neoplasia is a premalignant lesion with risk factors including HPV 16 and 18, as well as smoking, immunosuppression, receptive anal intercourse, and HIV positive status. Most primary cancers of the anal canal are of squamous cell origin. However, less common tumors can include adenocarcinoma and anal melanoma. Proximal tumors above the dentate line can drain to the inferior mesenteric or internal iliac nodes, whereas distal cancers have a higher incidence of inguinal metastases. Staging includes biopsy for tissue diagnosis, pelvic MRI to evaluate extent of local disease, colonoscopy to rule out synchronous colorectal cancer, and CT chest, abdomen, pelvis to evaluate for systemic disease. Treatment is primarily location-based. Squamous cell carcinomas of the anal canal are treated with the NIGRA protocol, consisting of mitomycin, 5-FU, and radiation. Response can take up to six months, and patients are divided into three groups, complete remission, persistent disease, and progressive disease at six months. Treatment of non-responders is restaging followed by a salvage APR. Perianal lesions can be treated with either local excision with one centimeter margins or chemoradiation depending on the stage.